Well, hello everyone. This is Joe from Couture Fitness and Lifestyle Coaching, and this is um, our free uh, monthly workshop that goes along with our free monthly challenge. <clears throat> and this uh, week and in this today, it's going to be on nailing your nutrition. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, just a bit about us. Um, I'm Joe. I am a certified life coach, and then my uh, business partner and the co-founder of Couture Fitness is Allison. Um, and we like to say that we are starting um, a calories up revolution and um, going to tell you and educate you about a calories up lifestyle. Um, we are both amateur fitness competitors. Um, and we, like I said, we like to say that we are starting a calories up revolution. And the reason that we formed Couture Fitness is because um, after um, doing competitions, we were approached um, by a lot of women wanting to know how to get fit and how to lose weight. And um, we frankly both got so sick and tired of hearing um, horror stories about women who were chronically under eating, who were scared to eat more than 1200 or 1500 calories a day and was really wrecking their bodies. And we knew that there was no way they were going to achieve the fitness goals they wanted um, without better um, and more adequate um, nutrition and, um, it, you know, that, that more information needed to be shared in this space. So we decided to start a revolution. Um, and it's like, as I mentioned, a calories up revolution. And really, I say that I have someone joining. <laughs> so just wanted to make sure that I let them in. Hi there. Hello. Hello. Um, so I had, I had just started um, and I was talking about um, um, Allison and I starting Couture Fitness. So I'll just keep on going. <laughs> you didn't miss much. <laughs> um, and so, um, so anyway, um, Allison and I started this business because we um, were really sick of what the diet industry peddles out, which is um, it really has just one quiver in its arrow or bullet in its chamber or tool in its toolbox, which is to help women lose weight by restricting calories and um, in a very severe way and hoping and praying it will get um, results and result in weight loss. And there are so many more strategies and so much more things that go into getting fit and to losing weight and changing your body composition um, and getting strong rather than just more than just going low calorie and cutting calories. Um, it is definitely a part of the puzzle, but we're here to be a voice in the void and explain that quality adequate nutrition is really what is needed for long lasting weight management. And that's really um, our passion and, and what we love educating people about. So um, we, um, I'm gonna talk about that a lot today. Um, and so we started um, Couture Fitness about a year ago, um, kind of like, like I said, after hearing one too many horror stories about women that had chronically dieted their entire adult lives or were chronically eating, you know, 1500 calories or less a day, but desperate to lose weight and, and still not loving the, you know, the body they had, even when they were restricting and eating very low calorie. And we knew there really is, you know, when you're in that spot, there is sort of nowhere to go um, to lose weight. So um, we're going to talk all about that today. Um, okay. So what really does matter for weight loss? And we have one more person joining let her come in. Um, so what matters for long-term weight management? Um, so 80% of weight loss relates to nutrition. Exercise is much less important. Yes, you do need to move your body, but what, what I really mean by this is you can work very, very hard working out or um, you know, going to the gym. And if your nutrition is not on point or is not <laughs> properly calibrated, it, you know, you, you won't lose weight and you won't get kind of the results that you're seeking. So nutrition really is the biggest piece of the puzzle or weight man or for weight loss. What, what needs to happen is that you need to be in a calorie deficit. And this is a simple math equation and you to, you know, usually that means you need to be eating 300 to 500 calories less than what you are currently eating um, or your current energy expenditure. And that last piece is really important because 
your energy expenditure is basically kind of like what, how much your body is burning um, to keep you alive on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you have chronically been eating low calorie, it's, it's gonna be low. And so getting you into a calorie deficit is going to be very difficult. Um, but, but that's all just to say very simplistically that, you know, you have to be in a calorie deficit. It's, it's not eating a superfood. It's not some magic of when you eat. Um, it's not some magic of the combo of foods that are together. It really is being in a calorie deficit. There's no way around that. Um, the quality, quantity and quality of nutrition matters. <laughs> and what I mean by that is you need to be eating enough protein and you, um, that's the most important thing um, in terms of that quantity and quality. Yeah. Um, your, the amount of carbs and fat you eat matter a little less, um, but kind of how all three of those are calibrated um, is important for weight loss. And it, what, what I mean by that is sort of important for how you lose weight and whether you're losing fat or you're losing uh, like body fat or whether you're losing muscle and water um, as a result of um, your nutrition. Okay, this last bullet point is very, very important for long-term weight management. Um, another big piece of the puzzle is that you are not spending too much of your time in a calorie deficit. And the reason for that is because if you, your body adjusts, your metabolism adjusts to how much you're eating and you can't, you're, you will no longer be in a deficit if you are constantly chasing a diet or weight loss. And so you need to be spending, um, what we like to say is 80% of your time, not trying to diet and being in a calorie maintenance or surplus um, phase. Um, and, and you need adequate, what I'm going to call non-deficit nutrition to make the reason you need to do that is to be able to make changes to your body composition and add muscle tissue to your body, which is going to help you. Um, it will help preserve your metabolism, number one, and not have it, you know, degraded over time. And it's also when you do want to lose some weight, it's going to give you the opportunity to do, to do so and give you some caloric runway for when you might want to diet. But really, most of your time should not be spent in a deficit or in a diet. And that's really, really important to know for long-term weight management. Um, okay. So we, um, at Couture Fitness, we are proponents of following like a macros-based approach to nutrition. Um, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, so um, the building, what, what are macronutrients? That's what, whenever I, which I talk about macros, you know, to people who, aren't sort of in this world, like what in the world are you talking about? So macros are basically the big building blocks of nutrition and of like kind of, you know, the building materials of like your body. <laughs> so there are um, three main macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fats. Um, protein are, um, that, that those are four calories per gram, that, that those are going to be macronutrients that really support muscle growth. Um, they're protein is anabolic. So it's muscle building and muscle preserving. Carbs are kind of like your quick energy. And those are also four calories per gram. And then fats um, are what they sound like. And those are a little bit more calorically expensive. They're nine calories per gram. Um, macronutrients are not the same as micronutrients. Micronutrients are like the vitamins, minerals, that sort of thing. Um, everything you eat falls into a macronutrient category, like everything. So if you ate like a piece of celery with some peanut butter on it, it's going to be composed of macronutrients and we could, you know, it's going to have some carbs and fats, that little snack. Um, so everything you eat is, is going to be made up of macronutrients. Um, alcohol is actually also a macronutrient. I don't have it up here because it has zero nutritional value. Um, so you're not likely, you know, if you work with us, certainly not, but if you work with another macronutrient coach, you would not get like a budget for alcohol because it, it literally has no nutritional value, protein, carbs, and fats. You need all three. Um, you actually just need protein and fat to like live carbs are not necessary, but they are very helpful <laughs> and you want to be eating carbs for a variety of reasons, but alcohol, you don't need. Um, and serves no purpose really. Um, you can fit it in, but it doesn't really have any nutritional value. Fiber is not a macro in and of itself, um, but some it's something to pay attention to and we, and we set fiber targets or look at fiber for our clients. Um, so it's not its own macro, but some tracking tools will look at it and subtract fiber from your total calories.
Okay, the sources of each macro. Um, so like I said, protein is gonna be like your chicken, your beef, fish. Um, you can also be in protein bars, protein powders, which can be used to make a variety of things. A lot of dairy products like Greek yogurt, um, cottage cheese, cheese, eggs and egg whites are a good source of protein, fish, tofu. These are all sources of kind of like pure protein is what I would call most of these items. And then carbs are your fruits, your vegetables, um, grains, including oats, rice, quinoa, um, legumes, so lentils, beans, peas um, are also carbs. Peas actually have a little bit of protein too. Um, milk and yogurt um, that aren't concentrated like, like the Greek yogurt and cottage cheese also are a form of um, carbs. Um, and then your typical starches, such as like potatoes and sweet potatoes, like starchy vegetables, also like pasta, those sorts of things. Those are all in the carb category. Um, and then fats are um, avocado, peanut butter, nuts, eggs, cheese, flaxseed, chia seeds, butter, those sorts of things, oils. Um, a lot of people think that nuts like almonds are protein. They're, they're not, they're fat with a little bit of protein. So they, they really follow fall in the, and peanut butter, nut butters, fall in the category of fats. Um, and so kind of for weight loss, the key is getting these kind of all in the right ratio. Usually what we see um, when we're um, looking at someone's protein is the protein is too low, or when we're looking at their total macronutrients, protein is very low, and then carbs and fats, you know, might be too high or, or a little out of whack. Um, so you do want you again, the most important thing is that you're eating enough protein, um, but you also want kind of the right ratio of carbs and fats for weight loss as well. And but really, that just goes into the total um, kind of your total macronutrient profile, um, when when the total calorie um, profile is accurate, and, and your protein is assigned, then kind of everything falls in line. But what we typically see is just not eating enough protein. That's where the macros are off. Okay, what is adequate nutrition? Now, this is this is probably the most important slide and most interesting slide that I have. So, for an adult male, you know, the daily, you know, what would be adequate nutrition is two thousand to twenty five hundred calories. Um, for an adult female, that's eighteen hundred to twenty three hundred calories. Um, and just to put this in perspective, like a toddler, the appropriate calories for a toddler is 1200 calories and that's male and female. Like it doesn't, you can see that, um, that changes a little bit as, as you know, we grow up that, you know, it's a little bit different for, um, men and women, but as toddlers, little girls and boys should be eating 1200 calories. Now here's the interesting thing. Um, what also gets, what I've also seen as a typical 1200 calorie a day um, allowance is it's what Holocaust prisoners receive. Now, I, I doubt the quality of the Holocaust prisoner nutrition was very good. <laughs> I've heard sometimes the food was rancid. Um, Noom, Weight Watchers, and Jenny Craig usually set calorie targets around 1200 calories a day as well. So you can see how different that is. Um, and these are um, the adult male and adult female categories calorie targets that I have listed there are kind of what the guidelines we follow at Couture Fitness, just what it's kind of our rules of thumb. That's not even, this isn't even as high as the RDA. This is on the low end of the recommended daily allowance of calories. And um, so it, this is all a little bit relative too. So you could, so the, a adequate nutrition could also be on higher than this or on the higher end of this. So you could have a very active female with excellent body composition who is eating 2,500 or more calories a day. Same for, you have a male with very, who's very active, who has great body composition and is eating 3000 calories a day. And that would be adequate nutrition for that person. That wouldn't, I wouldn't call that overeating. Um, but you could also have a 200 pound woman that is eating a thousand calories a day and, um, you know, who is overweight, you know, like, you know, from a body composition and body fat perspective, like fits in the obese category of, of, um, of body composition and she could be eating a thousand calories a day and that would be inadequate nutrition even though she is overweight so adequate nutrition really has nothing to do with how much you weigh it's how much you're eating on a day-to-day -day basis and people get hung up on that a lot they get very you know they're like well 
but I'm 80 pounds overweight. Yes, I'm only eating 1200 calories a day, but that I must be overeating if I'm overweight. That's not how it works. Um, and that probably is a little bit mind blowing to you. <laughs> it was mind blowing to me when I kind of first realized it. And because in here, I'm going to give you explain to you why this is the case. So I just gave examples of how someone can be eating more than these allowances, but not be overeating. They can, that can be adequate nutrition for them. It does not work the other way. So what we see and what we know is that when you drop below 1400 calories, your body starts, does not have enough caloric intake to kind of run the normal processes that it would. And you may be eating that and thinking like, what is she talking about? Well, I'm just telling you that it is. What happens is when you go below 1400 calories for an extended period of time, your body is going to start robbing from other places to to keep functioning. So it can start, it will start robbing like from your building blocks. So it will pull um, from your muscle. Muscle is very calorically um, expensive to maintain. So you will lose muscle mass if you undereat for chronically for a long period of time. It will pull it from your bones. Um, certain your hormones will get very squirrely and basically, you know, processes that are run by your hormones that can be digestion, that can be a variety of other things will change and slow down because you are not giving it the calorie, your body, the calories it needs to run those processes. So, um, and then, you know, of course, the thing that we always talk about is your metabolism will slow way down. And so if you have chronically, how you get to be a hundred pounds overweight eating only a thousand calories a day is that that metabolism you're robbing from your muscle mass. Um, all of your processes have slowed down. You are probably burning calories at a much lower rate than the woman eating that's in really good shape and eating, you know, 2,500 or 3000 calories a day. You're not, she's burning calories at a much higher rate than you are. She has great muscle mass. Um, and then the, the gal who's eating a thousand calories and a hundred pounds overweight, her body is like not hardly burning any calories just to sort of for basic maintenance and staying alive. Cause it, it doesn't have the calories to burn. Everything slows down. And then when she does go eat more than a thousand calories a day, say holidays, Christmas or whatever, her body is going to store anytime it gets a little bit more food, it is going to store it as fat because it has no choice. It is trying to survive and stay alive. So how, that's how that happens, um, is that you can be very, you can be overweight, but under eating. And we see that all the time. We see that more than we see actual people who are overweight and overeating. And, and you know, that may not be, you may not be able to extrapolate to that to the general population, but I'm telling you it's a thing. And um, there's really no weight loss journey that is worthwhile unless you start out with adequate nutrition. Like if you, Number one, it's going to be very hard if your nutrition is not adequate to get weight off of you, and it's going to be nearly impossible to maintain. So just know that like we want to be heading towards these calorie targets that I'm telling you about if you're looking to for like long term weight loss, long term weight management and long term, you know, what I'm going to say is like, you know, body composition improvement, if you want to change your body fat composition you know, you need to be in the ranges that we're talking about um, to achieve that long-term. So how to improve your nutrition. Um, so like I said, we really um, advocate for a macros-based nutrition plan. Um, I'm, you know, this is not really dieting so much as like in, intentional nutrition. So it's kind of managing your nutrition in the same way that you like manage your checkbook. <laughs> you know, you, you, or that you have like a household budget, like you have budgets like calorie budgets and macronutrient budgets and you just try to hit those and and that's how you can manage your nutrition and improve it um so um but following a macros based nutrition plan it does involve some tracking so um we really like uh, my fitness pal as a tool um and so the reason why this works is that there you have some accountability um you if you're tracking your food and again following like a uh, macros based nutrition plan, you have some data and some targets to make better nutrition decisions on a day to day basis that brings you awareness to what you are eating and where what areas that you might be low in and where you might be over. Um, when everything is kind of calibrated, you're going to feel pretty good. And if your body is nourished, you're not going to be prone to over or under eating like you'll you'll kind of, you know, you'll you'll have a sense of how much you should eat. Um, and again, it's going to shine a light on where you might be lacking in macronutrients. Like I said, that's usually protein. 
Okay, so how to start? Um, how do you start doing this? Well, the first thing is you, you know, the first step in any sort of change, whether it doesn't really matter what it is, is awareness. And so we really recommend um, downloading a food tracking app. We, we use MyFitnessPal, it's free. There's been a lot of R&D with MyFitnessPal, my kind of everything under the sun is in it. It's pretty user-friendly. Um, and then just start tracking everything you're eating um, and seeing where you are. And we would recommend um, using a food scale or measuring cups to get a sense of like the quantity of peanut butter, noodles, fruit, things that you are consuming. It's very difficult to eyeball those things and, and have any clue, um, you know, how much you're eating. And that really does play a role in, in what your daily caloric intake is and, and whether you are hitting um, those macronutrient totals that, that we're talking about. It's very difficult to eyeball things and portion sizes matter. They just do. Um, okay, how to determine your macros. We get this question a lot. Um, we don't recommend using the MyFitnessPal preset goals or like going on to a lot of the calculators on the internet. They're just going to set you to like that 1200 calorie range, which is too low. And that's either going to learn to burn out or if you can stick to it, it's going to lead to those metabolic adaptations I talked about in your body going in and robbing other processes to stay alive. So we, we, we wouldn't recommend that. What we would recommend is kind of, um, I know everyone, everyone wants to lose weight. We get that. Um, but really, like I said, you're, you're kind of, if, if you can't get to that those normal or adequate um, calorie ranges that I talked about, it's, it's all kind of a lost cause. Um, it's not going to do any, be anything that's sustainable. So what I would say is track your food, see where you're at, start number one with hitting a 100 gram protein per day goal that, that might take you some time to establish that habit. And then you wanna aim for a calorie range that is adequate. So, um, so like for, if you're a woman, you're going to want to aim for that 1800 to 2000 calorie range. So let's say you, you track your food for a week and, um, and you see that you're eating 3000 calories a day. Um, so first make sure you're eating hundred grams of protein a day, and then you could set your macronutrients. If you wanted to lose weight somewhere lower than 3000 calories, I wouldn't necessarily go all the way down to like 2000 calories a day, but you could go down to like 2,500 calories a day. And, and that would put you in a deficit and you would probably see some weight loss. If you are eating 1200 calories a day, um, if, when you track everything, that's where you realize you are, you need to start moving up towards that 1800 to 2000 calorie a day goal. Well, you may lose weight. A lot of women do, um, and men too, when they start nourishing their bodies. And the reason for that, I think <laughs> it's hard to say, um, is that like those processes I talked about start running again, like you take the stress off of your body, um, hormonal function improves and like your body just starts working better and you start burning more calories, um, your metabolism improves. And so, and the stress reduces. And so you, you may very well lose weight, but you want to get up into that 1800 calorie or more range a day before you even think about cutting calories and trying to go in a like intentional weight loss phase. If you're eating 1200 calories a day, um, and you can kind of, you know, you can kind of set your fat and pro or carbs where they fall, as long as you're getting in that 100 grams of protein per day. I mean, yes, there are, if you've been doing what we see typically is if someone's been doing like keto or following a keto, keto protocol, their fats are like way out of range, <laughs> like sometimes hundred grams or more a day. Um, so we, you know, we would bring those fats down and bring their carbs up, um, in a calibrated way. Um, but make sure that, you know, the number one goal is going to get that protein target high and, and have our clients start meeting that. If you are um, a lot of, um, conversely, a lot of ladies who've done Weight Watchers, this is just what we've seen, have a real, are very low fat or kind of fat phobic. And so they have trouble getting their fats up. Um, so we like to see, you know, everyone eating at least 40 grams of fat a day. Again, that's kind of for hormonal health. Things are going to get wacky if you aren't eating at least that much fat and at least hundred grams of carbs a day. Um, we see you know, like brain function kind of, um, decreases when you get much below hundred grams of carbs a day. So I would follow those guidelines, but beyond that, you can kind of set those as you want, as long as that protein is right and your overall caloric intake is, is headed in the right direction. Um, 
you're going to have better success in terms of following your macros and following your macronutrient goals if you plan your day in advance when possible. Um, and you want to plan kind of around your protein sources since that is typically where people are under eating. So get your protein in and then fill out around it, see where you need to fill in at around it. So that's a very basic explanation of how to determine and hit your macros. Okay, so the perfect meal formula um, is um, what we like to see, in the, and I'll explain why, is that each meal that you eat, so that could be a snack, that could be breakfast, that could be lunch, that could be dinner, is try to include a protein, a carb source, a fat source, and fiber. So breakfast, that could look like oatmeal, that's going to give you your carbs and your fiber, some fiber. Um, some scrambled eggs, that's going to give you some protein and fat, and that's going to give you, and some strawberries, that's going to give you fiber. So that would be a breakfast that fits that meal formula that I just mentioned. The quantity of each of those is going to depend on your overall calorie and macronutrient targets, whether that's a cup of oatmeal or a half a cup of oatmeal, how many eggs that is, again, depends on like what targets you're trying to hit, but that sort of those ingredients would make up that perfect meal formula. What that might look like for lunch is some turkey. That's going to give you some proteins on bread. So like a sandwich, <laughs> that's going to give you um, some carbs. And you could put cheese or avocado. That could be your fat. Um, if you use cheese, it's going to have a little protein. And then some veggies and hummus on the side. That's going to give you some fiber and some more fat. So again, that would kind of hit that profile and have all the ingredients that we're talking about. Dinner could look like a steak um, that's going to have some protein and fat, a baked potato that's going to give you some carbs and green beans that's going to give you some fiber. Um, and so you can see here, um, like you might be asking yourself, where are all the fruits and veggies? Why isn't she talking about getting lots of fruits and veggies? Well, um, th those are fruits and vegetables are important. Um, that's more like micronutrient nutrition, which is important. What we found if you if you follow a macronutrient profile, you're going to hit your micronutrients. And you can see here where the veggies really fill in are in the carbs and fiber. Veggies just on and fruits have a lot of carbs and fiber. So here you can see that it, it usually plugs that fiber piece and is also going to have, provide some carbs. So that's where veggies, um, fruits and veggies um, kind of fill in the gap. So the, the goal here is that we want to, you, you be eating 80% of or 80 percent of your calories coming from whole minimally processed foods and the reason for that is um, number one those foods are going to be more thermogenic and what i mean by that is like you're going to burn it's going to be good for your metabolism because you're going to burn more calories processing those foods than you are going to burn highly processed foods that's the problem with like Doritos and very, very processed foods is that they, they burn through your body very quickly and they don't have much of a thermogenic effect. Um, and, and when food burns more slowly, it's going to be more satiating and it's also going to uh, stabilize your blood sugar. Um, and all of these the sources of food, especially the, the meat proteins, so protein coming from animal products, cholesterol, the cholesterol from those um, protein sources is really going to help out with hormone regulation um, and, and carbs and all that stuff also, you know, impact hormone regulation. So this is just a really good profile for, for planning your meals. Um, okay. What are our meal planning tips? Um, you want to start eating protein early. <laughs> I always say front load it um, because, you know, like I said, that 100 grams of protein is going to be really hard to fit in in one sitting, and, and it would probably make you very sick to try and eat 100 grams. Or if you saved it for dinner, you're, you're not going to meet that target. Um, we really recommend coming up with a loose meal plan that hits your macro targets. And what I recommend is start where you are, where you already are. So track your food, see, you know, do you need more protein? Okay, but look through your meals or what you're doing in my fitness pal, and where do you need to, where can you add in protein? I would it's probably going to be every meal and snack. So, um, you know, figure out what, what you could add to breakfast, lunch and dinner that are is based on what you typically eat anyway. It's, from an adherence standpoint, that's going to be much easier than completely changing how you eat on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, if you are like eating 300 grams of carbs a day, like let's say you, I don't even know what this, I haven't done the math on this, but let's say you tracked your food and you realized, oh gosh, I'm eating 20 grams of protein a day, 300 grams of carbs and 100 grams of fat a day. So you would know like, okay, I need to probably bring carbs and fat down and protein up. So 
again, you would see where you want to add protein or what you, what, what you would swap protein for, um, for the carbs and fats, and then, you know, where you would want to remove things. <laughs> so I, I always say like, start where you are, it's going to be, it's much more likely that you're going to stick to something that's just tweaking what you're already doing. Um, an, an easy example of this is um, like, if say you eat oatmeal for breakfast every day, an easy way that you, you will need to add protein to that meal. Um, and so you could make it with egg whites. Um, there are tons of recipes on the internet that explain how you do that. Or you could add protein powder to those, that oatmeal, or you could add some chicken sausage to that breakfast, or you could add a side of scrambled eggs to that breakfast to get some protein there. Um, and just, that's what I would recommend doing. Um, I do really recommend um, picking out two or three bulk proteins to make a week. So like chicken, pork, you know, um, maybe like a bolognese sauce or something that you can eat on throughout the week um, and pick out two to three macro friendly dinner recipes for the week. Um, we have a lot of recipes on our blog for like bulk protein, like I, there's an entire bulk protein uh, blog post. We also have daily menu ideas on our blog that I really recommend you go check out if you want to see kind of all of this in action and what you would eat just to hit the protein targets and what 1800 calories a day looks like or what 1500 calories a day looks like. And, and I know I've preached that, you know, the adequate nutrition is really in that 1800 to 2200 calorie range. Um, we do have menus on our um, blog for people like in the 1500 calorie range, 1600 calories. That's for a couple of reasons. One, for we, we get a lot of clients that are eating like 1000 to 1200 calories a day, and we don't just immediately jump them to 1800 calories. We move them there over time. And so they will move through a phase where they're eating 1500 calories a day. So we have daily menu options there for them. Conversely, um, when you are in a definite diet cutting phase, and, and when we take clients through that phase, they may drop down to 1500 calories. So we have menu ideas for them there. So I just wanted to explain that. The last thing I would say is stop scavenging. <laughs> Make sure you have food on hand that will hit your targets. Make sure you have protein in the house. Um, make sure that you have, you know, food that's going to be nourishing in your house. No one does well when it's like a catch of can situation or, you know, like I hear this a lot, like, oh, I didn't eat all day. And then I came home and there was no food in the house. So we went out to dinner. Perfect. That is a perfect game plan for packing on the pounds. Um, you're basically starving your day, your body all day. And then, you know, eating a bunch, probably a bunch of fat and carbs in the evening and not much protein. And, and that's no good. So Yes, you know, doing all of this will require some planning, but your eating habits are going to drastically improve with a little, just a tiny little bit of planning, I promise. And again, you probably wouldn't manage your household budget that way, and you shouldn't manage your nutrition budget that way either, like with no planning or no forethought and just kind of spontaneously eating what's around the house or not having food around the house. So you, you are going to have to do a little planning. Um, one thing that we really want to explain and, and um, impress is that the macros life, like this nutrition um, concept that we've, I've just explained to you, can be a very luxurious life. Um, it may sound like a pain. And, and I remember, you know, back in the day when I first just got started, I was like, oh, God, this is so neurotic. I don't like paying this much attention to what I'm eating. I'm obsessing about it, but uh, if you after you do it for a while, it's kind of like budgeting your checkbook or paying attention to your household budget. Um, the macros, following a macros, you know, approach, you know, basis to nutrition is extremely flexible. You can design your food and your meals around foods that you really like and enjoy, and that fits your lifestyle. Um, if you follow our guidelines of being in a deficit for only a short period of time, you can fit some really, you can fit treats and luxury foods in your diet on a regular basis. Now, this is all within moderation. No one is going to be able to drink a bottle of wine every night or eat a pint of ice cream every night. Maybe the gal that's like eating 3000 calories a day and has great body composition. <laughs> she probably has a ton of muscle on her body and um, she might be able to get away with like ice cream every night, but, but no one is, you know, this all has to be within moderation. But like I said, if you are, if you have adequate, good quality, um, nutrition, you also don't crave these items as much. I mean, you will really notice that after time that like at night, you're not rolling into the evening, totally depleted and exhausted and like 
just ready to down the bottle of wine. You feel pretty good when you're when you're nourishing your body in this way. Uh, macros based nutrition is very high quality. <laughs> you will be eating a lot of fruits and vegetables. You will be eating a lot of really lean, high quality proteins. And I like to say you will be eating like a queen or really how a queen should be nourished. And I don't mean like, you know, tons of alcohol and chocolate and stuff, but like if you had a star athlete or you had someone that was really important, you would want to feed them this way to keep their body running, to keep them feeling good, to keep them full of energy um, and performing well. This is how you would fuel them. Um, our favorite bloggers are um, Lily Eats and Tells. We, we pulled all of our um, challenge recipes from these bloggers. Lily Eats and Tells, Oh Snap Macros, Skinny Taste, Lauren Fit Foodie. Um, their, their food is delicious. And honestly, you know, if you cooked it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even, if someone made it for you, you wouldn't even realize you are eating healthy food. Um, it is not a life of like chicken and broccoli and rice. I promise you, um, you can fit a lot. I have had dinner parties, um, cooking this way, macro friendly dinner parties and had everyone ask you like, what's the recipe for this? And, um, really you can lose weight eating this way. And this is how you eat all the time, but how do you stay so fit eating this way? Like I, I, I promise it is really, um, it can be a very luxurious life. Um, okay. The benefits of eating this way and like following this approach to nutrition. So what are the benefits of a calories up lifestyle? Um, so number one, you're going to feel pretty darn amazing. Even if you're in the short term, you don't hit, you know, get some, we get a lot of clients that come to us and they're like, why didn't I lose 10 pounds? I've done keto before and I lost 10 pounds the first week I did keto. I'm here to tell you that was not real weight loss. I mean, it was, yeah, I mean, I'm sure the scale changed. Most of that was water <laughs> and that is not sustainable weight loss. So even if you're trucking along, you know, most of our clients who, when things are working properly, we have them in a deficit, if we have them in a fat loss phase, but frankly, a lot of clients that we reverse diet to lose about a pound a week. And that is, that is a great rate at which to lose weight and to lose fat. Um, but they feel amazing. They, we very rarely get complaints of hunger or feeling like uh, we often get more complaints of like, I'm not sure I can eat all this food. I feel pretty hungry, but then when they start lifting and, and things sort of start to regulate. They're like, oh, I, I actually can eat all this food, but you're gonna feel amazing. You're gonna have a lot more energy. You're gonna sleep a lot better. Your hormones are going to be very happy. And all of these things make for a happier you, I promise. You're gonna be stronger because your body is going to actually be getting the groceries it needs to, if you're working out a lot, to convert that to a stronger body. Um, so you're going to be able to work out harder, get stronger, because again, like your body has all the building blocks it needs to build muscle and, and change its body composition. Um, and I, we've heard of this a lot from gals that we have that come into our program that are big runners. Um, and once we start feeding them more, they're like, oh my gosh, I can run faster. I can run longer. I noticed that a lot when I um, switched over to sort of this approach to nutrition was my endurance skyrocketed. I wasn't really, I didn't really have that as a goal, but um, I was lifting a lot more and eating a lot more, but my endurance actually got much better. So if you like working out, your workouts are going to get a lot better. You're going to be able to do a lot more in the gym and, and feel really good doing it. Um, the next benefit is that you can actually go on a diet for a short period of time and your body will respond. Um, I've talked about this before in podcasts and stuff, but I was like on this chronic 1500 calorie a day cycle and I could not, my body would just would not lose weight. I would gain and lose the same few pounds over and over and over. Um, and so, um, that, that will go away when you actually try to diet, your body will respond and you will lose weight, like meaningful weight loss. Um, here's the next one. I think this is the best, you know, reason to follow this approach to nutrition is, you can go on vacations, date nights, holidays without gaining weight. And that won't even be, you know, your body is going to be used to being nourished and getting food. And so when you want to go, you know, enjoy these fun occasions, your body isn't going to be like, finally, she's giving me food and I'm going to hold on to all of it. <laughs> you won't gain weight. And it's really great. Um, and you don't have to worry about taking your food with you or how you're going to get a bunch of workouts in to compensate for the extra food that you're eating. Then the last thing, like I said, you can make real lasting, significant body composition changes. You're going to have more muscle on your body, stronger bones, less body fat. Um, if you, you know, 
eat more and eat adequately versus just spinning your wheels and losing and gaining the same five pounds. Um, what are the benefits of having a coach? So this is what we do. We give all of our clients um, macro and um, nutrition plans and exercise plans. And then we coach them through it, you, you know, through one-on-one -on -one weekly coaching. We also have a lot of group coaching around like the lifestyle and mindset aspect of this. Um, but the benefits of having a coach and I have a coach, I mean, I, I know all of this and I can set macros for my clients and give them exercise plans, but I have a macros coach. I have a fitness competitor coach who gives me the exact same. And it's really helpful. It's really hard to do it for yourself. <laughs> I think because food is involved and we get kind of squirrely around food, like we're emotionally attached to it for a variety of reasons, it's just hard to do it for yourself. But what a coach can do um, is they, they will be experts in this. So you're not going to have to spend any time searching the internet and figuring this out on your own. They will know exactly kind of where to start you and what information they need to get you on a good plan. Um, they know when to push you and when your body needs a break from dieting or just like they can kind of read the signs maybe in a way that you can't. Um, they can provide objective feedback about how your body is responding to different things using data. Um, if you have a good coach, your health will be their number one priority. And sometimes that's hard to do for ourselves. And, and I fall in that category too. Um, they will help you set a plan for the long term, not just like what's it, let's just do a quick fix, get the weight off as quick as we can, and then dump you in a place that's really bad. Um, support and accountability. We all know that accountability is a big piece of this. <laughs> like I said, it's hard to do on our own and then can help you um, with strategies to overcome any obstacles that are getting in your way. So that's the benefit um, of a coach at Couture Fitness. If, if you're interested in working with us, we take a, you know, a big part of our focus, what kind of makes us different, maybe from your, another macros coach is we do focus a big piece of our coaching on the lifestyle and mindset piece of this. Um, yes, we give you macros, we give you the workouts, but we are really going to coach you through fitting this into your life in a way that you love um, so that you never have to diet again. We, there may be periods of time where we go through like a calorie reduction um, period to achieve body composition goals. Uh, those will be very short strategic periods of time and your body will still be very nourished, but you will never again have to go through like a horrible like keto diet or that very restrictive, um, like kind of depleting mind, soul, body depleting <laughs> process of doing a really strict diet. Those don't work and will dump you in a very bad place. And frankly, they're, they're not necessary for what you want to achieve. Um, if you want to hear more from us um, or want to um, learn more from us, we do have a podcast, the Boost Your Metabolism After Age 30 podcast. Um, and we have a group that's where hopefully you're all in this group um, and we post information there. Um, there's our Instagram. We're also on LinkedIn and then our website. And I would recommend if you go to our website, really going to our blog, there are a lot of resources there, especially in this nutrition space. And if you just need ideas for like food plans and recipes, but why don't we, um, that's about all the prepared content that I have for you, but why don't, can I, why don't we do some questions and answer does, what questions does anyone have for me about any of this? Anyone? Um, what, what are your, all of your thoughts on the, those numbers I put up on the adequate nutrition? Does, does that shock you? Does that seem about right? Does that seem like too much? I thought it seemed about right. Okay. Um, I <clears throat> have been told to watch my fat intake because mm -hmm. I, I know I was eating too much cheese before mm -hmm. Christmas. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm wondering, how did you pick the amount of fat is is that just a like a well-known target that you would do 50 100 grams of protein and 50 grams of fat or how did you come up with the fat um, goal um for you or that 40 grams of fat number that i mentioned uh like for no. you specifically for me specifically, I have okay. 50 grams of fat. Oh, you have 50. Okay. So we have some like ranges that are typically kind of what we view a healthy range. Um, we would definitely be more in kind of the higher carb, lower fat philosophy than like a 
someone doing like keto or something. And so, um, basically there, it's not like we, we just kind of know, and also it's like a lifestyle thing. So if like, we see that you were eating a little more fat, like it's probably going to be difficult for you to drop down to 40 grams of fat. We also want to have some runway. Um, so if life is just easier for you on 50 gram, I, I'm guess I didn't set your macros. Allison did, but I'm, I'm guessing she kind of looked at what you were eating before and just kind of maneuvered it that way. Um, it gives us a little runway with you if we, if we want to drop it at some point, but also is, is, you know, low enough that it's, 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 it's good. It's healthy. It's not overboard. And, um, it's just like a reasonable amount of fat to be eating. Does that make sense? Sure, sure. Some of this is a little bit more of an art than a, than a strict science. Um, like we can just kind of tell what's, if I, like I said, if I have someone that's been doing keto and is used to eating like 120 grams of fat, I'm not going to drop them to 40. <laughs> that would be, they would be very hungry and it would just be so, that would like, like rock their body. So what I usually do and that I kind of step it down and then slowly step their carbs up. Um, and again, that would be like a benefit of having a coach. Um, but that's like how I would approach that client. So it's, it's different for everyone. And it really depends on what you've been doing before and kind of where we want to get you. I just want to say I've been so impressed with the My Fitness Pal app. I've never used it before. I mean, I've only done used it for mm -hmm. not even a week, but boy, to get real feedback on how much sodium is in some food and you know, like the bread had three that I was eating had mm -hmm. three grams of fat. And I thought, oh my gosh, here I have not paid enough attention to all those things. And to see the big picture, it's really been eye-opening. Yeah, awareness is a really great thing, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's really been terrific. Yeah, so, how are you feeling? Uh, well, I'm feeling great, and once and I'm eating more than I mean, I'm very, I'm totally satisfied every day. It's just amazing, and I think I've lost, you know, maybe half a pound. <laughs> that's great. That's great. Yeah, I mean, so, I, I I think we're reversing you, so like weight loss yes, is not correct. the first goal, but um, right. but that's great to hear. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, I always say like people come into us like very desperate to lose weight, but there really is no one that, I mean, certainly none of our clients that are, that need to lose weight so quickly that it's worth doing it the wrong way. It, there, there just isn't. So it's, it, it's totally worth doing it the right way. And when we kind of get clients on that track and they start eating well and like really quality food they're like you know what this was so worth it like I feel so much better I kind of yes I want the weight loss but this is I, life is so much better now I can, I can do life right. so much better because right. I actually have what I need to get through the day yeah and yeah, I'm thinking less I'm... about food because I have enough of it like I'm eating enough Mm -hmm. that's exactly how I feel Joe this is Jessica and I apologize my husband's doing some projects upstairs oh, that's so okay. hammering that's that but so I'm training for the half marathon uh -huh. and it's the first one I've ever done. And the most, I'm really not a runner. And I will say following the macros that you gave me has been incredible. I think it's made a really big difference, making sure everything was balanced. I think like the previous person said, I was eating probably way too much fat. It was, it was, has been amazing to see how much food you can actually consume. And as long as, as it's in those right ratios for your body, it makes a huge difference in how you feel and how you perform. And I just did a run today and felt awesome and feel awesome. And when I've done things like this in the past, it hasn't, I mean, I would feel so tired throughout the rest of the day. And, you know, it's just, I'm finding that my body just feels like it has what it needs. And it's mm -hmm. incredible how high you can actually get with calories and it still works for your body and you mm -hmm. see it responding. Well, that I love hearing that. And I totally, I mean, I, so I've, I've done, I have like, I've not as I, I was a runner in my past. Um, mm -hmm. and if you guys come to, for those of you who are clients, if you come tomorrow night, I will show you my before picture of my running and paying zero attention to nutrition <laughs> running picture. <laughs> and then this, like, you know, how that looks now. Um, but, um, I mean, no, no, none of my running coaches ever talked to me about nutrition. I just, you know, you were supposed to carb load or whatever, but I mean, mm -hmm. it would wreck me for, if I ran 13 mile, I could not function the rest of the day. And I just wasn't, I would, would go on those 13 mile runs, like on an empty, I, I don't know how I did it. And I, yes, of course mm -hmm. your body 
we take really hard for your body <laughs> to recover from. So the recovery is a lot quicker. You have like gas in the tank when you want to do something kind of extreme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's, it makes a big, big difference. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So, um, okay, anything else? Um, Lindsay, any thoughts from you on, I've, I've, whenever I tell people, you know, a lot of people have no idea how many calories they're eating, but then when they look at it and they look at those numbers I give, they're like, no way. Okay, there is no way I can eat that much, but um, I didn't make them up. <laughs> um, no, I was pretty familiar. I mean, I've been around the block a time or two mm -hmm. with macros. So, but um, I just wanted to say, I have been working my way through all the podcast episodes and I love them. So I oh, good. say I just appreciate you and Allison doing those. And yeah, it's, um, those have been really good. Um, and yeah, and I've had a really good first week so far. Good. So it feels really good. That's great. Um, okay. Well, like I said, that's, this is, I don't, I don't have any more prepared content for you guys. Um, and, um, hopefully between this and listening to the podcast, you get a sense of like what really matters, um, for nutrition. Does anyone have any questions about like, like supplements, the micronutrient aspect of that? Um, I think I deleted a slide that I didn't mean to that, that shows like, cause a lot of people they'll get, we'll get two or three weeks and they're like, shouldn't I be eating? Like, what about, you know, and, or people will get very hung up on like, I do eat healthy. I shop at Whole Foods. I only eat organic produce. I only, I eat, you know, I, I'm vegetarian or um, I eat three pounds of spinach a day. <laughs> and it's not to say that those things aren't important. They do not matter for weight loss. I mean, they, they do a little bit because like I said, you know, they're going to impact your fiber um, intake and they're going to, you know, I think, you know, vitamins and minerals are good over, you know, speaking, but that does not really influence the weight loss the way that <coughs> calorie and macronutrient calibration does. So any questions on that or worries about that, I guess? No, I've never really worried about that. I think I've heard you say on the pod or something where it's like, if you're eating and hitting your macros, you're doing just fine on the micro nutrients. So, I mean, there are some people who like they're, they're, and we don't recommend this. And I think you would, I still don't think you can do it. Like where, I guess if you just ate nothing but protein bars all day, I don't know how you would hit your, or like you ate, they, they talk about people like, oh, their micro, you know, their macronutrients were fine, but their micronutrients, like, like they were eating pizza and donuts all day. You would blow out of your fat and carbs by yeah. very quickly. So yeah, the there can be I'm, days. The one that eating, I'm struggling yeah. with, the most, sorry, Joe, is the um, fiber. And I know the other person was like, uh, learned a lot from my fitness pal. And I, every day when I'm inputting my fiber from my fitness pal into our tracker, I'm like, oh crap, I don't think I've hit it any day this week. So I'm struggling with that. I know that's not a, probably a micronutrient, but I'm like, oh crap. That's the one yeah, where I'm not doing as good. Okay. Okay. A couple of things to look at. I mean, there's, there's some easy ways to increase that fiber intake. Like, I don't know if you're eating oatmeal, if you can add like chia seeds to anything, those are, those are pretty good for fiber. And I, your macros are, you could definitely fit those in. Um, things like apples, um, you know, I, frankly, like when I, like I, right now I am getting ready for this show <laughs> two weeks left and, um, I am pretty, I'm pretty low on carbs. Like I'm hundred grams of carbs and I am 40 grams of fat and then like 150 grams of protein. It's hard for me to, but I'm not eating. That doesn't leave a lot of room actually for, um, fruits. <laughs> so I mean, like a lot right. of, um, zucchini and, um, and actually they don't want me eating a lot of like cruciferous vegetables. This is just for a two week time period. This is not right. all the time, but I eat like a lot of zucchini and cucumber and those aren't super high in carbs. So sometimes going totally whole foods, it, that actually makes it a little bit harder to hit your fiber targets. Like oatmeal, you need some grains have a lot of fiber in them. So I would just look at like kind of your, your carb sources, um, make sure you, know, you could eat like an apple every day, some chia seeds, things like that to really, and then I don't know the a lot of the um, stuff that's marketed as low carb actually has a ton of fiber in it. That's how they get it to be low carb, you know, like right. the whole net carb thing. So I don't know that that really is the kind of fiber we all want to be eating, but you could, you know, like you could look at some of those products. 
Okay. And honestly, you know, it's just week one. So I was like, okay, it's yeah. just something I can be more conscious of too. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't uh, let me stress about that. I'll let you know if it's a problem. I mean, if you, okay. <laughs> yeah, like if your digestion gets really bad or something, it's, it, it may be something to look at. Fiber is not the end all be all with digestion either. You can cause problems eating too much fiber with your dis- digestion in, in both directions. So, um, we can I'll, I'll just i'll take a look at it and see if i think we're in dangerous territory or suboptimal territory <laughs> um okay anything else no. okay well thank you thank you all for coming um and we're all you guys are all signed up for the challenge yes when yeah. does that recipe come out tomorrow morning it's a i'll <laughs> give you a it's a chicken salad um recipe like a fancy chicken salad recipe Okay. So nice. you'll, get, you'll, you'll get it tomorrow morning. Awesome. So. Well, thanks. All right, really thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Thanks ladies. Talk to you soon. Bye. Sounds good. Bye-bye. Bye.